Okay, so after I finished uploading that video, this was the last clip on it. That was major refrigerant leak detected in frozen food case. I uploaded it, I believe, yesterday or the day before. Moving on from that, I spent a lot of time looking for the leak. I mean, a lot of time. It was like a couple of hours, two, three hours trying to find the leak because I knew that it was there somewhere. I looked all over this this uh, end of the coil. I sprayed it all down with bubbles. You can see me, uh, this is footage I got because I was using the camera and the light to try to find bubbles forming somewhere and I couldn't find them. But I couldn't give up. I knew that the leak was there because every time I turned my leak detector on, it'd be beeping. It would go off, it would go off bad. It would alarm really bad. Like, And then all that dye that was there. So I couldn't find the leak, I couldn't find the leak. It just kept going and going and looking and looking. And it got so frustrating. So I even got, I had to go get more hot water and because there was ice there on the bottom. And I took all that hot water and I got all the ice you know melted because i thought maybe the ice was blocking the leak which it wouldn't because high pressure is going to leak and it's going to go around ice uh, and i'd be able to find bubbles but nonetheless uh, you know i'm sitting there i'm looking i'm spraying it all and i'm just getting frustrated because i know i can't give up and then finally at 6 15 p.m i see bubbles uh, i see a, a bubble starting to form and uh, we'll go from here. Man, I'll tell you what, it is hard uh, to find a leak that does not want to show up. And I really mean that. This leak, this leak is crazy, man. Oh, now it's, now it's wanting to do a bubble. Man, I've been looking for this leak for like three hours, man. I knew it was here somewhere. But yeah, it won't show up when you spray it. like it goes away stick your finger back there though look what happens god I hate leaks like that right now we're sitting at 63 pounds on that line okay so I'm in the motor room now and I doubt y'all gonna be able to hear me but so this is Circuit 5 that I'm working on, you can see I've already got it valved off, and this is my suction header, so I need to take my pressure from this port through my gauges and dump it into the suction header. Alright, and I'm also going to shut off my, my liquid line valve, I can get my freaking wrench back there. You know what? Actually, no. No. We're gonna, now that we've got the liquid closed, we're gonna close, I mean, we're gonna open the suction back up and it's gonna suck it right out of there, these compressor bars. My mistake. I still kind of knew it, this rack stuff too. Okay, so I spent a lot of time messing with those valves and that rack or that circuit. And I realized I, I, I had something I needed to learn. Now join me if you will while I, I discuss this. Now you just saw me doing all this, okay? Now, right here, we've got the suction valve for circuit D5 that I shut off. And then behind that, we've got what I would thought was the liquid valve, right? 
that one right there in the middle of the screen. What I didn't know at that time was that there were two other headers that were feeding my circuit and I was getting pressure. So I spent about an hour, at least an hour, going back and forth from up from the motor room back down to the case where this gauge is right here. And every time I went down, my gauge had 30 or 40 or 45. So I'd go back up there and I would mess with these valves again and I would open it and, and I'd try to, to, to get the circuit empty. But let's see here. So you see those that, that header right there on the top they feed in this little line it's very blurry but those curly little lines feed from that header right into my suction side through the EPR valve and that's that's where my problem was the entire time not only that but if you look carefully let's see let me see if I can explain it to you here it's kind of dark because my phone's dead but man you kind of learn as you go I guess you all not only do you got to shut off the liquid but You've got the suction here. This is discharge, I think. This one back here that three rows in is liquid. And then you got this up here that's also feeding into the circuit. I finally got it down because I kept getting pressure from somewhere. I couldn't figure it out. Now that I closed this, I think I finally got it going down. So see what I did? So I learned, hopefully y'all can learn from this too. This was at 8.43 that I realized this. And if you, you know see, what? I was doing, you know what? I was doing all this stuff. It was 7:24, so I spent almost an hour and a half running back and forth, up and down, uh, chasing this problem that I should have. Re there it is. There's the, uh, there's the liquid header right, or that other valve right there behind it. See, right here in the front, we've got suction. This one is in the middle. Is discharge. That one back there is liquid, I think. And I had to turn all three of those off and the one up at the top feeding into the EPR. All right, finally, I got zero PSI in my line and I can perform the repair. I've been working on this, on this case, this leak for like five hours, man. It's ridiculous. Oh, well, hopefully y'all get something good out of it. And the... Uh, material in this video maybe help somebody that would that would make me feel better about it all right i don't really got the hands for it so i'm gonna start by drying it off then i'm gonna sand it and then i'm gonna heat it up with my torches and put a bunch of put a bunch of good 15 percent solder all the way around that joint there but especially that joint there all right i'm gonna take off my Frost thermostat or termination switch, whatever you call it. Take it off so it don't get hot. See if it held. I'm gonna be freaking pissed if it did. It held. Ah, that's great. That's great. Cause I'm freaking.
tired and I want to go home. Oh. Still got to put this damn thing back together though. All right. Got the defrost termination back on. Got the sensing bulb back on. Now I'm going to go. I guess we'll go turn the circuit back on so that these other ones can start running again. Let's see. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. 16 degrees, yeah. All right. back down get that in metal plate cap back on there I let this uh, I don't know if you guys saw it or not but I had that fan leaning up against the, the door frame here got that over need to scoot that top plate over and then put the fan on the fan in the top finally done at 9 56 p.m. I did not expect to be working on this thing for no five or six hours well patched it it worked took forever thanks for watching all right so it's the next day and uh, this is the case that gave me hell yesterday a little leak over there in the corner so time to recharge it because the rack is low and it holds 500 pounds so i got five jugs here and i got three more out in the truck 200 pounds I don't know if any of y'all followed the jug of 404 lately, but I'll tell you what. So like I've shown you, take out the uh, valve core on one of the cases down here on the suction line and save yourself from carrying all this uh, up the stairs or up to the roof. There's an easier way. You know, the beauty of these things is you don't even got to use a gauge. All you need, this is your like, little valve right there. You can just, uh, you know, pull out your valve cord depressor just like that stick it in your pocket don't lose it all right so i got it connected i got my valve closed all open all the way because we're really gonna get some flow flip it upside down purge then open all right so before we start charging it up i'm gonna take you guys in the motor room all right, let's take a walk in the motor room first so I can show you guys the liquid level and uh, on the on the receiver, which is right there. So you see how this needle is pegged out down below zero. It's a little red needle right there. You can barely see it over there. And then up here on the computer controller, it's the Danfoss controller. Go to rack D and you select alarms cleared alarms and we can see the most recent alarm 
It's for low liquid level. They had quite a few of those. Um, if you look over here to the right of my finger where it says 0.0, .0 that says now that's the current liquid level according to the computer. So that's how we check that. And then also this is the big tag for Rack D. You can see it's got a bunch of different circuits. So just like take a good look at that. It's 16 doors, 20 doors, 16, 20, 21, 25. All right, so as you can see from that big list up on that rack in the motor room, rack D does a lot of units. This is D9. It does, I believe, in the, all, of, all of aisle six. That's rack A, A7. So, but if you're looking at rack D, there's our refrigerant. That's A, so this is D5. D5 goes halfway up to like this natural food sign. Yeah, D5 is right there. D5 is also across. So I don't know if that's right, but I do. I don't think it's. I don't think they got this one labeled wrong. That's stupid. Anyways, this is D4. So all this is D. This is D9. Oh, these front end caps are all D9, and there's a, a bunch of other ones probably along the back wall. All right, so now that we've seen what the level, liquid level indicator says, both the computer and the uh, analog one on the receiver, we've already purged our line, we're ready to go. I guess while that's filling up or emptying out, whatever. We'll see where that what else might be on rack D. Let's see. Okay, so this is D1 over here. This is aisle five. D3. So imagine the liquid in in rack D. We got to fill up the receiver, and then we've also got to fill up like I don't know, uh, five, at least a five eighths or a three quarter inch liquid line that comes down there, down that one. We gotta fill up all these liquid lines to get that liquid level to stabilize up high. All right, now this one's just about empty. It's been like a minute. Get my second one ready. All right, there goes number two. This one right there in the middle, there's number three. And the one to the right of it is number two. I didn't really, wasn't able to really get much footage while I was there, uh, but that's the best I got. So this is the third jug that's going in. And then after three jugs, we up to 11 and a half receiver level and like 15 on the analog. There goes number four. And there goes number five. All right, well, my phone went dead, so sorry about that. But I ended up having to add one more jug. When I was at jug number five, after adding that one, I had about 40% liquid line level. But you got to be careful because when there's a big difference between when all of them are closed, all of the circuits on like D1, D2, D3, all the way through D10, when all of them are closed, the liquid line level here is much higher. Like it's up here at like 57 right now after six. But then once they all come out of defrost, if they're all set for defrost at the same time, that liquid level is gonna drop to 20 or 15. So you can't just charge it up with, you know, up to like a 50%. The, the store only wants it at like 20 or 30%. But if you put it at 20 or 30%, and everything is closed, then when they all open and they all feed the evaporators, if they're all doing it at the same time, it's gonna drop to very low and it might even set off an alarm. So you just gotta be careful. Um, but that's that's where I left it. I left it at 57.3, like right around 55, whatever. And that was with six jugs, that's with all of the circuits closed, all of them in defrost, and then when they all back opened back up, they were, it, the rack level was around 20. 
All right, well, this is just a video clip I had from yesterday. I didn't get any footage at the very end, you guys. My phone was dead, so I'm sorry. Um, but that's it for this one. I made this repair yesterday on this case right here, D5. And then today I went back and I charged it up because they had a low liquid alarm. And it took six jugs of refrigerant. It's 144 pounds. And it's, uh, it's, it's back up and running now. So thanks for watching you guys. I appreciate the support and I appreciate the comments and I'm glad that y'all enjoy watching the videos and that they're helpful. So I will keep making them. And uh, these are just some pictures that I took for the customer. They're, they're my screenshots from the videos I take. So I'll keep making them for y'all. Thanks for watching, have a good one.